Hey everybody, Paul here and welcome to this month's quick tip tutorial. Today I'll be taking you through um, inclusive and exclusive settings inside of Freestyle. This is a way that you can specify which assets get a Freestyle render and which assets can be excluded from that render all in one pass, which is a very, very handy thing to do. It's so simple that I've also added as a special bonus um, a small segment here on uh, getting some passes out of your EV render so that you can get um, more control uh, over your final result using the compositor. So without any further ado, why don't we jump into Blender and let's get started. So opening up Blender fresh, we've got our default cube, our camera and our light, and we're just going to make a very simple scene here. So I'm just going into front view and hitting the G key to grab this uh, cube and move it up in the Z direction by one unit. I'm going to move this over to the side and I'm going to duplicate it with Shift D. So we've got two cubes uh, spaced about so far apart. In top view, that's numpad seven. I'm just going to go Shift A and add a plane. Tab into edit mode and just going to scale this up uh, to about there. And then I'm gonna make this lamp by selecting it a sun lamp. And we don't really need it to be super hot. We're just going to uh, rotate this so it casts enough of a shadow on these cubes. Let's just go into material preview so we can see. And under the uh, viewport shading, we'll enable scene lights so that we'll begin to see a shadow. Now, this blockiness is something that we all experience, okay? So let's just uh, quickly take a look through our camera. I'm just going to select the camera and just with the G key, hit Z, Z, and then just move this back so that we can encapsulate everything in the frame. G, Z once, just to bring this down. And I want these objects to overlap slightly. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna set my pivot to 3D cursor, which is set at the center hit the R key, the Z key to rotate ever so slightly in the Z direction so that I get that. And I'm just positioning my scene so I've got these two cubes overlapping somewhat and that this, uh, this background also overlaps. I might just rotate this in the X so that we get a little extra overlap because what I wanna do is uh, I really wanna illustrate uh, this method uh, by having overlapping objects. It's, it's kind of important uh, to see here. Now, uh, the first thing we're gonna fix before we jump into freestyle is this shadow problem. Now, with a sun lamp, the shadow is set to an automatic setting of, say, a bias of one, and it contacts shadows are off. Now, we wanna eliminate this jaggedness here. First, let's enable contact shadows. What this will do is it will make these shadows um, from the contact points between objects appear a little bit more realistic. And under Cascade Shadow Map, we can see that we've got this thing called Count. Now, if we reduce this count, you'll actually see that a low count will give us a very jagged edge, whereas a higher count tends to smooth this out, but it kind of caps out at about four. So this doesn't change the problem. What we have to do is go into our render properties and under shadows, you want to increase the cascade size. Okay, so if we bump that right up to 4096, now we get this very nice crisp shadow. We can enable things like high bit depth if you really want. Now the other thing I'm going to do is, uh, before we jump into freestyle, is I'm gonna split this off here and I'm going to change this to my compositing window. And there should be nothing there by default. So we're gonna click on use nodes so that we get our render layers input and composite output, okay? So just gonna open that up. There's nothing that's rendering there. And you'll notice that the image alpha depth is there. And uh, we want to enable freestyle. So still in our render properties window, we enable freestyle and then we go over to our view layer properties and we're going to collapse passes so that we can focus on freestyle we click on as render pass and there we've got a freestyle output and so let's just do a, a quick render and if we click either this render active scene or we just go up to render render image 
one of these windows will render. Um, and so we want it in the top one. So I'm just gonna switch this over to image editor and set that to render results so that this one, we can just go back to our compositing by hitting escape here. And it will notice obviously that freestyle has not rendered. That's because it is its own separate pass. So if we connect that freestyle to image, there we have our freestyle pass. What we want to do is shift A, uh, color mix. And we want to mix our image as the first image input and freestyle as our second image input. Now the operation doesn't really matter, but generally multiply gives you the best result. And you want to make sure that you enable this alpha box right next to it. Now when we output an image, what we get is the freestyle lines over the image, okay? And so we're all very used to seeing this as our first freestyle pass. Now, what we want to do is exclude some of these objects from the freestyle render. And so the easiest way to do that is to utilize our collections and uh, use our selection by, by enabling collections. And then we're going to um, use this inclusive exclusive uh, operation over here. So how do we do this? Well, let's make this window uh, our 3D viewport once again just to make sure that they're all using the same material. I'm just going to go into shader editor here and select one of these. All right, so it's got a basic principle shader, but I don't think the, yeah, this doesn't have. So I'm just gonna select this plane, select one of the cubes of the material, control L, and I'm gonna link all the material. So everything in the scene has the same material. Let's take a look at our scene collections over here. And I'm going to double click on this collection over here. And I'm gonna call this freestyle. Now I'm going to create a new collection. Um, I can right click on scene collection and just click new collection and under collection two, double click. And I'm just going to call this not <laughs> freestyle. So we know what is what. Now in our viewport, we could now select this cube and shift select this plane and we can hit the M key to move to collection and we can move these to the not freestyle collection. You'll see that in our freestyle collections now, we've got freestyle, camera, cube, light, and not freestyle has cube and plane. We're hoping that this not freestyle collection won't render any lines and anything inside this freestyle collection will render lines. Now, we've got our freestyle settings, we've ticked as render pass, we'll just collapse that so we can focus on line set here. And yes, we enabled collection by clicking on collection. So this should be blue now. And what we can do is go down here to collection, click on that little box and we click not freestyle. Now we click exclusive. When we do a render, what we'll notice is that it doesn't look exactly right because it looks like it's etching. But if we take away this image operation, you can now see that only that cube renders with freestyle. Now to make this a little bit more obvious, I'm gonna show you how to tweak a few settings. So we'll just go back to our render properties. Let's go down to film and let's hit transparent. Uh, we have to make sure that in our output properties, our color is set to RGBA so that we do get a transparency channel in our uh, PNG, which is what we're rendering. Uh, and now uh, under our view layer properties, we're going to enable a couple of passes. I'm going to enable the color diffuse and I'm going to enable the shadow pass. And so now we've got a couple more passes to play with. Just gonna do a fresh render. So now we should see that our um, image has got a transparent background. And with a very minimal amount of compositing, uh, we're going to get this to look a little bit better. So first off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a Shift A, Converter Set Alpha. Why do I wanna do this? Because the diffuse color pass doesn't have the alpha channel, but it carries all of the diffuse information, which is basically the color here. And so we do want to have that alpha channel. So we're going to use the alpha of the image as the alpha, 
and we're going to use the diff col as the image. And so now when we render out just a diff col, we're going to have that with transparency. Now I'm going to create shift A, uh, another mix node, and I'm gonna set this to multiply. I'm going to enable the shadow pass there. So now we've got our shadows rendering on top of our diff diffuse color pass. And now I can control those shadows uh, by dropping the factor ever so slightly. So we can have very light shadows, we can have very, very dark shadows, just using the compositor, okay? I'm gonna do one more thing between these two, and that is I want to render a background color. So I'm just gonna go ahead and Shift A again, color mix. I'm gonna set this image into the second operation here. I'm gonna make sure that I enable the alpha channel of this second operation. And now I can change this color to whatever I want. Now I'm just gonna make this blue just to show us that we can control that color. And finally, let's just move these nodes over. Let's bring in our multiply node with our freestyle and let's bring in this total composite into our first operation and then when we see the final image now we can see a clearer image for that freestyle line and so what we've gone ahead and done is setting that collection not freestyle as exclusive it gets freestyle to ignore anything inside the not freestyle collection we set up and only render freestyle for the freestyle collection. And in this way, you can render a freestyle for only the objects that you want picked out specifically to have freestyle on. So I hope you got a lot out of this month's quick tip tutorial. As always, if you like what you see here, do consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. And if you're feeling at all generous, uh, why not join the ranks of my Patreon supporters on my Patreon page? It's the support I get on Patreon that makes the production of these videos possible. Thanks for watching everyone. Bye for now.